Live, this is Action News Jack special coverage, Tracking Dorian. Right now, Dorian is a Category 2 storm, still moving very slowly, but now moving away from the Bahamas. This is a look at the storm's latest track released just in the last hour. An emergency room is flooding with ships. This is new video from a Freeport Grand Bahamas hospital where you can see some major flooding inside the emergency room there. Patients were evacuated ahead of the storm, fortunately. Thanks for joining us, everyone, on Action News Jacks at Noon. I'm Phil Amato. And I'm Dawn Lopez. The very latest for you right now. Dorian is losing some strength, but it's gaining in size. Let's get you caught up with the very latest. And here it is right now. Tropical storm force winds can be felt 175 miles away from the center of this storm. Dorian could bring its whipping winds and rain up to 100 miles off our coast early tomorrow morning. And already the Bahamas has suffered major hurricane force winds for nearly two whole days. At this hour, rescues are underway on the island. Looking live right now in Palm Beach County, where Dorian's outer bands can be felt as it hangs about 100 miles offshore there. Action News Jax has complete live team coverage for you this noon, starting at our First Alert Weather Center with Action News Jax First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Biedenbaugh. And Garrett, that storm finally starting to move. Finally starting to move now at two miles per hour to the north and west. And that's really some good news for the northern Bahamas as they were pounded by a major hurricane for 30 to 35 hours there with the eye wall interaction uh, on Grand Bahama Island. And unfortunately, that's what. Um, we're watching for you here in the Action News Jacks First Alert Weather Center as it pulls away and getting reports as well uh, from us uh, from the Grand Bahama area. And it's not good with devastation, unfortunately, as you would expect from a major hurricane. Now, of course, moving to the northwest at two miles per hour, you can see there's that center of circulation, the eye wall moving away. And we're now at two miles per hour for movement. So at least it is moving now. Tuesday this afternoon by 8 p.m., still forecast to be a category two. So the, the strength forecast. The intensity forecast has been lowered to category two status, but the waves have already been generated uh, across the area and the wind field is actually expanding. I'll elaborate on that a little bit more here in just a second. Wednesday in the morning to our south through the day near and east of Jacksonville's latitude between 90 and 100 miles just offshore. That's still the same forecast as we had this morning, and so that has really not changed, though any deviation to the left of this track or to the west would significantly increase our local impacts at the immediate coast. And then back to the north and east with an upper level trough that will kind of make it go back to the north and east and potentially make a landfall right along or skirt the North Carolina or South Carolina coast line again. So what has changed with this advisory uh, through the morning? It's got winds of 110 miles per hour. Category 2 is what we're forecasting now east of Jacksonville by about 90 to 100 miles uh, on Wednesday afternoon and into the evening. And it still does have that slow northwesterly movement, but at least it's not stationary anymore. Here's the visible satellite for you showing the cloud tops there. And I've also overlaid the wind field, which again is expanding to 175 miles per uh, miles away from the center of circulation with that area in yellow there. And the uh, hurricane force winds are now at about 60 miles, according to Air Force Recon. I want to show you a tweet from Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. In fact, I'll go show it to you right now. Uh, he is seconding an important message from the National Hurricane Center. The headline for the, this Dorian advisory is not that the wind speed has slightly decreased. The combined wind surge and flooding hazards are the same or even worse since the hurricane has become larger. So, in other words, these are direct words from the, from the Hurricane Center and from Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. Don't get so caught up in the category. This has been an intense hurricane that has already produced swells that are already on their way here, and we're already seeing them pop up on our wave indicators here in the Action News Jacks First Alert Weather Center. In fact, I'll show those to you uh, right now as we continue to track things here. First, I want to go through that wind field. Uh, that's that 175 mile uh, away from the center. Uh, tropical storm force wind field, and that includes the coast, perhaps even to the St. John's River Basin, and then it goes off to the north and east. This is not your typical 100 mile east of Jacksonville kind of hurricane. This, the swells have already been generated. It's going to be a beach battering, and even the winds can start as early as Wednesday morning, early between 3 and 5 a.m. for St. Augustine, St. Augustine Beach, 
Those are spots we're particularly concerned about with the waves from Volano Beach over to and south to Anastasia Island. Also into, say, the Crescent Beach area. We'll be watching that to you as, for you as well. Here's a live look from Jacksonville Beach on the Action News Jack's First Alert SkyCam Network where you can see the increasing surf already thanks to onshore winds and swells from Dorian. We also have another live look for you from the St. Augustine Pier thanks to Surfline.com. Some folks out there are watching, but you can see those winds and waves beginning to increase a very high rip current risk. We don't want anybody in the water uh, because it's just not safe to do so as of right now. And we'll continue to monitor these cameras uh, during the day and through tomorrow as well. It's 87, though, with that northeast wind at 20 miles per hour at Jacksonville Beach. And we are seeing some showers. These are not directly related to Dorian yet. We'll have to watch each and every one of these for even some quick spin up water spouts or even an isolated tornado to this afternoon as they race off to the south and west around 30 to 35 miles per hour. In, fi in fact, Nocatee by 1223. That will be moving in. Also down to St. John's County, crossing I-95 to the St. John's River Basin, approaching U.S. 17 now in Putnam County. You can see Palatka by 1220 p.m. is what we're watching there. There it is on First Alert Doppler HD. You can see going away from the center, all those raindrops well off away. Hour by hour, there we go through the overnight and into the early morning hours of your Wednesday. That's when we'll be seeing, depending on how close the exact track is to us, that's when we'll be seeing those potential tropical storm force wind gusts of 30 to 40 and even 50 plus miles per hour. Coming up in your first alert seven day forecast, I'll be detailing local impacts. Meteorologist Maritza Ross will join me as well. That's coming up in your first alert seven day forecast. All right, thanks, Gary. And we want to give a live look right now from Jacksonville Beach. That's where the surf is already being kicked up by Dorian. And you can see folks are listening and complying with the warnings and closures pretty much. You do see some folks out there, I guess, who are just taking a look out of curiosity. And people have been ordered to stay off the beaches, and police are keeping an eye out in spots. Action News Jack's Ben Becker continues our live team coverage now. He's at Bat Jack's Beach, and Ben, a few people still lingering out there despite those warnings. Certainly so, Phil and Dawn. Here behind me, hundreds of people here to enjoy the sights and sounds of what is Dorian approaching. But look at these waves. You can see the surf and these breakers coming in. And there are a number of surfers in that water right now. Ocean Rescue came by here about five minutes ago over their megaphone telling them to get out of the water. But these people have not. There are double red flags out here today. That means that if they have any trouble here, they will not be rescued. Again, double red flags. You will not be rescued rescued if you get trapped in this water today. Meantime, take a look over this way and you see some of the earth movers here at the beach moving sand to the walkovers, also the dunes to reinforce them ahead of this storm. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of people out here and they're here for a variety of reasons. See, you have a front row seat. I do. I'm just watching my boyfriend surf. <laughs> Little scared about that? No. No, not at all? No, he's a pro. What pose is this? This is dancer pose. Dorian. For, da for Dorian. <laughs> That's right. And this keeps Dorian away? That's right. Well, let's hope that does the trick indeed. Let's hope that does it. Now, I'm here at the pier. Now, back in, in 2016, Hurricane Matthew took out about... I'd say 20% of the pier at that time. Since then, about half the pier has gone back into use. This pier is scheduled to be actually closed down for two years in the next few months as they repair it from those damages from Matthew, also Irma. Coming up tonight at 4, 5, and 6, we'll discuss much more about what's happening here and this pier and what, if anything, can be done to reinforce it. Again, that's coming up later tonight. Reporting live from Jack's Beach, Ben Becker, CBS 47, Action News, Jacks. Your police are watching, Ben Becker. Well, some of the lower lying areas of St. Johns County are particularly vulnerable to storms. Action News Jack's Beth Russo picks up our team coverage live right now from Corpus Point. That's where families are most concerned about erosion out there, Beth. And they tell me that previous storms were what washed away most of this beach. They say there used to be a whole lot more sand out there. I was actually here on Porpoise Point earlier this year when the Army Corps of Engineers put down all this concrete to try and stop that erosion ahead of a nor'easter. What I want to do right now is pull up the St. John's County evacuation map. You'll see these families are some of the more than 150,000 people in low-lying areas under mandatory evacuations. That's zones A, B, Hastings, and Flagler Estate. 
streets. Today we've seen families who aren't evacuating, piling up the sandbags, boarding up and finishing up their prep work. They're doing whatever they can to protect their property. One family even left a note for Dorian saying thou shalt not pass. However, flooding and erosion is what's at the front of their minds. So of course the winds are strong, but I think most most of the buildings are built for that, but they're not, you know, you just can't you can't uh, ride it out against the current. We've been driving along the St. John's County coastline in the first alert storm tracker this morning from Volano Beach all the way to Crescent Beach. Families that we've talked to up and down the coast say that while they are staying right now, if this storm should shift, they would reconsider and most likely evacuate. We're live in Purpose Point. Beth Russo, Action News Jax. Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry is calling on everyone living in zones A and zone B to leave today and also manufactured homes. Right now, there are 21 JFRD crews strategically placed across the city for the sake of your safety. Action News Jack's Courtney Cole is live right now in Riverside. Courtney, that's one of the low lying areas that Mayor Curry was talking about when we took that news conference live. And during. And during Hurricane Irma here, St. John's River, the St. John's River here, it spilled over, overflowed into the streets here in the communities in Riverside. And that's just one example of why Mayor Lenny Curry is urging people to either get out who live in Zone A or Zone B or to come to one of the evacuation shelters. Mayor Lenny Curry told us as of 8 o'clock this morning, there were 360 evacuees, evacuees in the 12 shelters throughout the city. Now, here are the other main takeaways that people need to know about. There are evacuees. Evacuation shuttle stations, and those are at Jack Speech Elementary, Fletcher High School, and Mayport Middle School. The mayor says those will remain open as long as weather conditions will allow. And for all of you that take JTA, JTA customers, JTA will be suspending all services at 1 o'clock this afternoon. After 1, they will only be dedicating their services to paratransit and evacuation operations. So if you're watching right now and you're a customer with special needs that takes JTA, just remember that you will need to register with the city. I need to stress to those living in evacuation zones A and B, low-lying areas and manufactured homes, please evacuate today. Get out now. And we've also received some emails and phone calls into our newsroom about the bridges. Sheriff Mike Williams talked about that. Now, he said that he cannot give an exact timeline for when each of the bridges in our areas will close, but he said when the winds reach 40 miles per hour in terms of sustained winds, those bridges will close. He says he can't give a timeline because all of the bridges are not monitored electronically, so sometimes an officer has to use a wind meter to check that, but he's just saying, along with Mayor Curry, if you're in one of those evacuation zones, right now is your time to make your plan and get out because once those bridges are closed, they will not reopen until the storm has completely passed. Reporting live in Riverside, Courtney Cole, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. Breaking news right now. Just in the last three minutes, we learned St. John's County schools are closed through Thursday. Tomorrow, everyone but Columbia County will be out. Also on Thursday, Union, Glen, and Camden counties will close. No one else has made a decision past that. And from the Action News Jacks First Alert Weather Center, meteorologist Garrett Beatonwall right now using First Alert Doppler HD tracking Hurricane Dorian now slowly moving away from the northern Bahamas. I'll have the latest timing for what you can expect in your neighborhood. That's coming up in the First Alert seven day forecast. What to watch brought to you by Ashley Home Store.
Well, it's high tide right now in our area. Action News Jack's Bridget Matter is live on St. Augustine's Bayfront for us right now. Bridget, the area had significant flooding during the past two hurricanes in northeast Florida. Yeah, it definitely did, and we are seeing that the water is much higher now. One thing I do want to show you is we did see a little bit of rain, and this water is already starting to collect here on the side of the road. It doesn't really have anywhere to go, so when it rains heavily here, you see that we do get a lot of flooding. We'll show you this car here just so you can get a better idea of uh, where this flood water is going. This person's parked right here, and they're pretty much uh, in water when they get back into their car. We do have some video from 2016 of this very same area when Matthew came through here. See how high those flood waters get. Uh, that was from our first alert storm tracker. Uh, those waters uh, rushed into the buildings here, those businesses that are now boarded up. Uh, if we come back out to you live, I'm going to show you some of those businesses that are prepared for uh, any significant rainfall that this area will see. Um, and obviously, Matter uh, reporting live from St. Augustine right now. Let's go over to Garrett Biedenbaugh. He's tracking Dorian, of course. And uh, Garrett, as you mentioned earlier, the storm's a little bit bigger, even though maybe not as intense. Yeah, the wind field is bigger now. It's expanding, and we have that with observations with uh, the National Hurricane Center saying that, and also the Air Force recon going through and finding those winds expanding. And we told you the other day that once it happens to have a high uh, eye wall replacement cycle, which has happened, it will likely expand in size with the wind field, and that is what has happened here this morning and into the early afternoon now. The wind field has expanded. This is our noon position update, moving to the northwest at two miles per hour uh, right now, pulling away slowly, but at least it's moving now instead of being stationary over the northern Bahamas. Now they're just getting some of those outer bands right now in some gusty conditions, but not the most intense winds that the hurricane was providing them for 30 plus hours uh, in Grand. Bahama Island. Wednesday during the afternoon and early evening, we'll be watching Dorian move well off our coast by about 90 to 100 miles. And by 8 o'clock, pretty much right now, the forecast is due east of the Florida Georgia border to give you some perspective. And again, that's about 90 to 100 miles. But the waves and swells have already been generated. And to compare this with Floyd, Matthew, and now Dorian with the center there, this is Matthew, this is Floyd, so it's somewhere in between. But of course, both of these provided for a, a big beach beating here in northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. So it's similar with the category two or three, depending on what actually happens. And then that was the beach beating with the similarity there east of Jacksonville Beach. It was a cat five. So that's the difference here close by. It was a category five here with Dorian. And so the waves and swells have already been generated. So in, in, anywhere between um, Matthew and Floyd distance wise from our coastline is what we're talking about. But it wasn't as wide yet. But the wind field is expanding now. So here are the latest the tropical storm force wind time Timing for you. This is the start time and end times for each location. Downtown Jacksonville, 7 a.m., plus or minus one hour or so. Jacksonville Beach, 6 a.m., Ponte Vedra Beach, 5 a.m. tomorrow. St. Augustine, 5 a.m. through about 10 p.m. tomorrow evening. Fernandina Beach, 8 a.m., Brunswick, about 1 o'clock tomorrow, as it takes more time to get to your location from south to north. Storm surge forecast. This is above ground water level that could be there if this occurs. The worst case scenario here. And high tide is during the afternoon tomorrow, too, by the way. So that could enhance the water levels. And this does not include any wave action over and above the storm surge. So that means those 15 to 20 plus feet of crashing breakers uh, just near the coastline will continue riding up over that water and likely over the dunes in some locations at the immediate coast. So right now, what we want to do is time out the wind field for you as well. With that, we go to meteorologist Maritza Ross. Timing it out for you here, hour by hour and location by location. Uh, this is a this is this uh, evening, actually, this afternoon, and we're going to see those winds. We're already seeing them pick up about 15, 20 miles an hour across our area. Out at the beach is a little bit faster from 20 to 30 miles an hour. This is Tuesday night, the evening at 530. So tonight, 22 miles out in Jack's Beach, 24 out in St. Augustine. The further you are inland, the less those winds get. So 17 out in Jacksonville miles per hour. Palatka, you're at 19. Already seeing some of those little raindrops come in as well. But let's keep talking about these winds. This is 
on Wednesday morning and note as the winds certainly start to pick up as Dorian gets closer and closer to our coastal area. Remember, it's not coming inland. It's going to stay offshore. So that's certainly good news. But for the coast, it's certainly going to get a beating. Ponte Vedra, 36 mile an hour wind, St. Augustine, 38. And then finally, by Wednesday afternoon, take a look at that big red spot. That's some strong winds. Tropical storm force winds are 40 mile an hour winds plus. St. Augustine, 48. Ponte Vedra, 47. Jack's Beach, 46. So we're looking at some very strong winds here for the next few hours and especially as we get into tomorrow afternoon and it'll continue into Thursday as well. This is on Wednesday evening and they still continues pretty sustained at 40 miles an hour at the coast and at the beaches and by Thursday we're looking at those winds continuing to start to die down just a little bit around 20 to 15 miles. And you can see here in southeast Georgia as well, going to see those here about 40 miles per hour later in the day, heading from south to north. So we're going to continue tracking that for you here through the next couple of hours. Also, waves are building seven to eight feet just offshore. They'll be 10 to even 30 feet out near the core of the hurricane. So don't even think about going out with any boats here over the next uh, day or two. And surf building a 15 to 20 feet by tomorrow. Five Sweet First Alert Doppler HD right now is showing those bands of heavy rain, and we're also monitoring each and every one of these for the potential for a water spout or quick spin up tornado just with the environment that we have set up for you here today. It's raining heavily. You know it. You hear it in your door and on your roof there in Nocatee and that's moving off to the south and east at 30 to 35 miles per hour right now in Ponte Vedra by 1232 the Bay Yard area shortly thereafter and again using the wind data here on First Alert Doppler HD we're monitoring winds just offshore of 30 miles per hour with any of these little showers. So it's not thunderstorms but there are packing a punch with winds of 30 to 40 miles per hour at times. Hollister by 1237 with this pocket of heavy downpours crossing the St. John's River in Putnam County for the day today right now. Here's the hour by hour forecast going through the morning and into the afternoon tomorrow. We'll be seeing temperatures going into the 80s. And hey, by the way, we have a new tropical depression 7 in the western Gulf. Not going to impact us or the U.S. Here's your seven-day forecast with the weekend always in view. Mid-80s on Wednesday, then hot Thursday and into Friday, back into the 90s, and that continues into your weekend. You can always get this information updated around the clock by downloading the free Action News Jack's First Alert weather app. Nope, nope, nope. Garrett Beatenbaugh. I don't want to hear about that. For the latest, <laughs> anytime, stay tuned to Action News Jacks. And anytime we're not on the air, check out Talking the Tropics with Mike. Chief Meteorologist Mike Burge updates the blog with every new development. Take a look at this the Lake Worth Pier there in Palm Beach County. Those waves are starting to roll in there. Lake Worth, about 300 miles south of Jacksonville.
New video from Palm Beach shows just how dangerous storm surge can be. This man and woman were standing on a pier when a wave came crashing on them, and he was swept away. But thankfully, it was in a shallow part here where he was able to recover and then get up on his own. But can you imagine? Look at that. Just don't get too close, Whoa. right? We first showed you this video from inside a flooded house in Grand Bahama on Monday. We now know these are 20-foot waves slamming into that house. That's the water hitting my front, front room window, which is extremely high. Of course, I'm already completely flooded out. That's my bedroom. And the waves hitting there, that is over 15 feet. That video was taken by the Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources for the Bahamas. That's his home that was flooded. Hmm. Tonight at 5, Action News Jax will have team coverage from Nassau to Brevard County. Tune into CBS 47 and Fox 30 for the latest as the storm moves closer to our area. We'll have the latest for you, of course, here in the First Alert Weather Center and on the radio. News 104.5 WOKV.